Good evening, good evening, good evening. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's get this going here. to God. Glory to God. God bless you, Victor. God bless you, Javon. Good to see you on tonight. Praise the Lord for you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. God bless you, Dennis. Thank you for joining tonight. Amen. We're going to get started in just a minute. Give a couple of more people a chance to come on. But our lesson is really going to be a good one tonight where we started last week. Talking about, I can't help it. I'm just addicted to grumbling, fault-finding, and complaining. That's what we started last week. But in addition to that, I want to touch on a little bit of Thanksgiving, what the Bible says about Thanksgiving. And then we're going to go right into our lesson <clears throat> Excuse me, tonight as well. Amen. All right, let's get started. Again, I want to thank you all for coming on, those of you on so far. Praise the Lord for you tonight. I, I pray that something be said that would encourage you tonight to continue to trust God and his ability to carry you through the trials and the tests that you face in your own personal life. Even make you more aware of the words we allow to come out of our mouths to assassinate our own purpose, our own plan and desires that God has for our lives to be productive in the kingdom of God. And many times we're not careful of the things we say, like, for example, I'm just so stupid because I made a mistake. That's confessing what the enemy wants you to say about yourself to demise your own character. But when we speak what God says about us to speak, it gives us the ability and the power over the thought life of the enemy to think what God says to think and to stand on his word that, hey, I'm, I'm, I might have made a mistake, but you know what? God is still good, even in my mistakes, because he still keeps me, he keeps on protecting, he keeps on providing me. He gives me another chance to make things right, because many times we fall short of God's glory by our own desires of our flesh, but nevertheless, God never changed his mind about you or I just because we mess up and make mistakes. And sometimes we get stuck in the mindset of grumbling and complaining and fault finding, all these different things because we become addicted or accustomed to them as of a pattern of a habit. We form a habit of negativity so anything that happens in my life that catches me off guard or throws me for a loop, I find myself thinking those thoughts that are contrary to what God says about me, which is demising God's ability, even his grace that covers us. So when you get into the place and you know that God is on your side, that he's your strength, he's your shield, he's your buckler, you can stand on the word of truth regardless 
of what the enemy thought comes to your mind and cast down that thought and allow the Spirit of God to give you the mind of Christ to make you productive and make you uh, able to overcome and think healthy thoughts, thoughts of life and thoughts of peace that will empower you to keep trusting in God's ability to carry you. Amen. God bless you, uh, uh, Davion. So let's go into a word of prayer, and then we're going to get into our word tonight. I'm going to talk about Thanksgiving first, and then I'm going to um, go into our lesson tonight. I can't help it. I'm just addicted to grumbling, fault finding, and complaining. We started this lesson on last week, and we're going to continue where we left off from last week. Amen. So gracious God, our Father, I thank you for the opportunity, O oh God, to share your word tonight. I pray, O oh God, that you open up our hearts to be receptive to your word, O oh God that we hear the voice of the Holy Spirit speaking to us, God, bring conviction to our lives to change, to change our thought life, to change behaviors, habits, oh God, things that we allow ourselves to be in bondage to, oh God, that you break the shackles and the chains off of our minds tonight, oh God, that we walk by faith in the promises of your word that you have for us, oh God, that we can live a freer life that's living the life of Christ as we learn how to yield, surrender, and release ourselves into your hand, O oh God, that you have dominion and authority over our lives as we walk by faith and not by sight every day, O oh God, learning how to trust in your ability to lead God and direct us. And I thank you for the comforter whom you send as the Holy Spirit to dwell in our hearts, O oh God, to guide us into all truth and to help bring us to an understanding of the magnitude of the power that we have at our disposal, God, against the enemy. And we thank you, Lord God, that you open our eyes to see what you see, our ears to hear what you hear, and our hearts to be receptive to your word, to speak what you command us to speak. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. I want to talk about first tonight, what does the Bible say about thankfulness and gratitude? As, as we're approaching the Thanksgiving season, which is coming up on this Thursday, is approaching, you know, in a couple of days. We, we just want to be remindful that Thanksgiving is a time where we are to acknowledge how God has been good to us and give God thanks for everything he's done for us and help and allow us to wake up in the mornings to give God praise for another opportunity to have breath in our bodies, the activity of our limbs, to another chance to praise him, another chance to bless him, and allow the Spirit of God to lead and direct us in the way of truth and righteousness. What does the Bible say about thankfulness and, uh, and gratitude? Thankfulness is a prominent Bible theme. 1 Thessalonians 5, chapter 5, verse 16 says, Be joyful always. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances. For this is the will of for of God for you in Christ Jesus. Did you catch that? Give thanks in all circumstances. Thankfulness should be a way of life for us, naturally flowing from our hearts and our mouths. And one thing, as we've been talking about the battle for the mind for the last several months, is our thought life is what's going to predict what comes out of our mouths. So if I allow my thought life to be corrupt by demonic uh, voices speaking in my head or thoughts that the enemy inflict me with, and I don't cast down those thoughts, my mouth is going to speak in agreement with whatever thought is in my mind because it goes into the heart. And Jesus said it, what goes into the heart, it doesn't defile you. But what I allow to come out of my heart through my mouth is what's going to cause me to either be productive or non-productive, to be, to be faithful or unfaithful, to be truthful or to be a liar. So it's your choice to determine how your life is going to benefit in the kingdom of God. Are you going to live a more fruitful, abundant, and free life in Christ Jesus? Or are you going to always be bound to addiction habits and, and many different things the enemy inflict us with to hold us in a place of spiritual captivity? Digging into the scripture a little more deeply, we understand why we should be thankful and also how we are to have, have gratitude in different circumstances. Psalms 136, verse 1, Psalms, book, book Psalms 136, verse 1, says, Give thanks to the Lord for his good, his love endures forever. Here we have two reasons to be thankful. 
God's constant goodness and his steadfast love. We are to recognize the nature of our depravity and understand that apart from God, there is only death. St. John chapter 10, verse 10 tells us, For the thieves come nigh, but only to kill, steal, and destroy. But he said, I have come to give you life and that more abundantly. And then in Romans chapter 7, verse 5, it says, For while we're living in the flesh, our sinful passions aroused by the law were at work in our members to bear fruit of, for death. So if we don't walk in the truth of God's word, then we're walking in the nature of the enemy that gravitates us to the things that kills us. And that's what we have to really be aware of. What goes into my ear gate? What am I allowing myself to feed into my spirit that's going to damage me or destroy me? So I have to be careful that every word I speak, I speak life over myself, over my children, over my family, over my, my finances, over my business, or whatever I have, I need to learn how to speak life and be in response to being grateful unto God for the life he gives us. If it wasn't for God, we all would have perished a long time ago. That's why I love when King David said in one of the Psalms, he said, Lord, if you mark our transgressions, who would be able to stand? If God was to judge us because we were ungrateful, because we became selfish, because we came prideful and haughty and resentful to his will, God could have just killed everybody. But because of the grace of God, God gives us another chance after another chance after another chance to get things right with him as we learn how to obey his word that's been spoken to our hearts. Psalm 30, give praise to God for deliverance. David writes, I will exalt you, O Lord, for you have lifted me up out of the depths, and let me not and let not my enemies gloat or triumph over me. O Lord my God, I called you for help and you healed me. O Lord, you brought me up from the grave and you spared me from going down to the pit. You turned my welling into dancing, which is mourning, and you removed my sackcloth and, and cloth with with uh, uh from me with joy that my heart may sing to you and be silent, and be not silent. O oh Lord my God, I will give thanks to you forever. And that's what we have to always be reminded, that God is our deliverer. It doesn't matter what your situation is, what your circumstance is. God has the power. He has the ability to deliver you in everything you encounter in your life. And it's many times, I heard Joyce Meyer say this on today on a podcast. She was talking about, uh, many people, when they uh, get into depression and many different other types of sin, the thing that the devil hates the most, check this out, is a people or a person who refuses to quit. So I might make a mistake. I might slip back and do drugs. I might slip back and drink, fornicate, adulterate. Might even lie a little bit. It doesn't matter what I've done. If I repent before the Lord, as 1 John 1, 9 says, we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us for our sins and cleanse them from all the righteousness. Guess what? God gave you another chance. And because of the other, another chance that we have, his grace provides us to even be thankful that even when I mess up, I have an advocate, an intercessor who's still there for me interceding for me to get things right with God in my heart. Here David gives thanks to God uh, following uh, obviously difficult circumstances. This psalm of, giving, of thanksgiving is not only praise God in the, in the moment, but remember that God's past faithfulness. And that's, one, that's a key point to really take note of. We can always be reminded of the past things that God done in our lives. The past victories God brought me through, many different trials and tests I encountered in my life. How God always been there. Every time the enemy thought he had me, God kept me secure in his presence. It is so awesome to know that God is on your side and that I can still praise him, have a thankful heart, a gratitude. So even as we approach in Thanksgiving, there are going to be many people that are sad, many are broken heart, many uh, don't have family members. There are many people who feel abandoned, who feel forsaken. 
But yet God is, he promised to be a father to the father's mother, to the mothers. He promised to provide even for those who are homeless in the streets. God will continue to give us a reason to be thankful. And I just want to share that tonight to encourage you, you know, c continue to have a thankful heart. You may not be less fortunate like somebody else, but there are people in predicaments worse than where you are. And always be reminded that it could have been me. It could have been me without a home. It could have been me without food on my table. It could have been me without a change of clothing. It could have been me without no shoes on my feet. It could have been me living in a tent in the street. I saw somebody recently um, while driving through the city and, and this person was living in a tent on a street corner. And I'm like, Lord Jesus, you know, I'm like, God, have mercy on your people. It's getting cold out here. And, and there are many people just like them throughout the city are homeless. And, and many of them, some by choice and some by un unforeseen incidents that had intervened in their lives. They up interrupted their life sources, which caused them to end up living in the streets. So we all have to be grateful for the breath of life. Be grateful for the provisions God keep on making for us every day. The people of God are thankful people for they realize how much they have been given. One of the characteristics of the last days is a lack of thanksgiving. According to 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 2, it says, For the people will be lovers of selves, lovers of money, proud, arrogant, abusers, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful and unholy. So in the last days, these are the very things that's going to begin to affect people's heart, pride, un, 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 uh, unthankful. People are selfish. And we know, we know people like that. We run across people like that. Don't care about nobody else but themselves. And that's because they become lovers of themselves and the lovers of their money. They're haughty, they're arrogant, they're abusive, they're arrogant. They don't care what they say to you. They, they speak harshly to you. They slander you because you look like you got it going on. But I want to encourage you tonight as a people of the Lord, always have a thankful heart and know that the Lord is on your side and that God promises then in everything that we need, he will supply according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 20 says, Give, Giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we have to always be able to give God thanks. Psalms 50, verse 14 says, Offer to God thanksgiving and pay thy vows unto the Most High. And then Psalms uh, 136, verse 1, Oh, give thanks to the Lord for his good, his mercy endures forever. So remember that God's mercy endures forever and that he loves you unconditionally. And he will continue to bless you and open up the windows of heaven and pour out more than you can handle of blessings, that you will be a blessing to somebody else in this season in your life. Amen. So as we go into our lesson, last week we talked about uh, wilderness mentality number four. We started talking about, about that in the second, in First Peter chapter two, verse nineteen and twenty, says for for this is a thank worthy if a man for conscience towards God endures grief, s suffers wrongfully. For what glory is it if ye if ye when ye be buffeted? For your faults, ye shall take it patiently. But if when ye do well and suffer for it, ye take it patiently, this is acceptable unto God. And verse 21 says, For even hereunto ye are called, because Christ also suffered for us, leading us an example that we should follow in his steps. And that's what we have to have, the attitude of Christ every day of our life. When we're faced with oppositions and we're suffering, and sometimes suffering unjustly, sometimes people mistreating us, but we still have to have a smile on our face. We still have to demonstrate the love of Christ. We still have to keep allowing God's spirit to fill our hearts with truth and righteousness and keep on letting God 
spirit manifest in your life. And I guarantee the more you allow Christ to be revealed through you in the midst of your suffering, you'll be patient, you'll be long-suffering, you'll be kind-hearted, you'll be gentle, you'll be meek, you'll put up with people more than you used to because of the love of God that's in your heart. The Amplified, I mean, uh, the New Living Translation puts it this way. It says, for God is pleased when conscious of his will, you patiently endure unjust treatment. Of course, you get no credit for being patient if you are beaten for doing wrong. But if you suffer for doing good and endure it patiently, God is pleased with you. Verse 21, for God called you to do good, even if it means suffering. Just as Christ suffered for you, here is your example. You must follow in his steps. So we got to follow the steps of this example of Christ and the steps of Christ every day in our lives. Even on our jobs when people mistreat us and they pass us over for promotions and, and things we I know I deserved and, and yet they didn't give it to me. God says keep on suffering in patience and, and guarantee God will reward you. God will take care of the details for you. He will cause you to receive what you need in the proper time and the season of your life. For Jesus suffered gloriously, silently, without complaint, trusting God no matter how things look. He remained the same in every situation. So that's what we talked about last week, how important it is to remain your righteous stand of integrity. And, and even in your character, don't allow people to pull you out of your character. But you continue to stand in righteousness and truth on God's word. And I guarantee when you do that, the spirit of the living God will begin to flood your heart with such joy and such compassion for people. Even when people are doing you wrong, you know how to pray for them. Because the Bible tells us we are to pray for our enemies. Pray for those who despitefully misuse you and say all manner of evil against you for his name's sake. So in the process of praying for them, you're causing, calling God from his throne to come down and bless them with what they deserve. Even whatever it is, judgment, God will bless them with their judgment. Why? Because God wants to take care of his children. And he's not going to allow the enemy to abuse you or continue to misuse you. So you got to have a godly attitude in every situation you encounter. Ephesians 4, 4 chapter, verse 1 and 2. I, therefore, Paul, the prisoner of the Lord, appeal to you and beg that you walk a life worthy of the divine calling to which you have been called with the behavior that is credited to summons to God's service. So God summoned you. He called you. He qualified you. And he's, he's saying here, you have to walk upright before God in your position where you're called in the kingdom of God. You have apostles. You have prophets, pastors, evangelists, teachers. Doesn't matter what your position is. He said you have to walk worthy. Walk like you, 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 you own this thing. Walk like you've been called to this thing and you're qualified to do this work of the kingdom. Don't allow anybody to discredit you from what you feel God called you to do. You walk in your purpose. Living as becomes you with complete lowness of mind, humility, and meekness, unselfishness, gentleness, mildness, with patience. Bearing with one another, making allowance because you love one another. In other words, you allow others to make mistakes. Don't judge them because they make a mistake. But allow them to make their mistakes and keep on loving them. You have to bear one another's burdens because it's very important because the Bible tells you where to bear one another's burden and so fulfill the law of Christ. So when you bear that burden, that's Romans 6 and 1. When you bear the burdens of your brother and... and uh, in that situation, you have to allow God's grace to cover them and to, to guide them and to keep them and help them keep standing on the word of truth. It's very important because I tell you, the enemy is going to always try to bring deception to you to blind you from who you are in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Romans 6 and 1, it says, Shall we continue in sin? Shall we continue? We said, What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin? 
that grace may abound. For God forbid, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer in it? So when your brothers or your sisters make a mistake, go to Galatians, Galatians chapter 6. Galatians chapter 6. I tell you, this is a good word tonight. I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm learning something myself. Galatians chapter 6, verse 1. It says, Brethren, and this is in the Amplified Version, if any person is overtaken in misconduct or sin of any sort, you who are spiritual, who are responsive to and controlled by the Spirit, that means you and me, my brother and my sister. If you have been called to follow as a light in darkness for Christ Jesus, then it's your responsibility. When you have a brother that you know that has fell short of the glory of God, not walking in the right attitude and the right character of Christ, you have the right to go encourage them, pray for them, to help them get back on the right track. Why? Because you're being responsive to and you're being controlled by the Holy Spirit. Then he said, should set him in right and restore and reinstate him without any sense of super superiority and, without, and with all gentleness, keeping an attentive eye on yourself, lest you should also be tempted. All right? And that's verse 1. Verse 2 says, bear, endure, carry one another's burdens, troublesome, moral faults, and in this way, fulfill and observe perfectly the law of Christ, the Messiah, and complete what is lacking in your obedience to it. So we have a responsibility. If I see a brother or sister stumble in the faith, I have the right to go to them. Say, my brother, my sister, I was praying for you, and God told me to give you a word to encourage you. I know you might be going through some things in your life, and, and even I'm um, not living right for God at this moment, but I want to encourage you, to, encourage you that God still loves you. God still cares you. God wants you to come back to the place of getting your relationship right with him. And you share this word that God placed in your heart. You don't know you might be saving that person's life from going to hell. You might be saving that person from committing suicide. We don't know what people are faced with in their minds. So much depression is in the land. People are depressed because of the way they look. They're depressed because of the way they feel. They're depressed because they've been sick for a long time. They're depressed because a loved one passed away around the holiday. They're depressed. And the more they focus on the incident and circumstances, the deeper they fall into a pit of despair. But one thing about God, God has the ability to lift you up out of the pit of despair and set you right back in right relationship with himself as if you never even fallen. That's the goodness of God. And that's the grace of God. Because the grace of God appeared unto all men, teaching us to what? To deny all ungodliness and worldly lust or sinful desires. And to live godly and sober. That means a sound mind before God and man. You have the right to be depressed sometimes, but you don't have the right to stay in it. You find yourself getting depressed. One thing I had to learn in my own personal life, when I went through cancer, went through divorce, went through a lot of heartaches and pains, I learned how when depression came upon me to seek counsel, not only seek counsel, but began to create my atmosphere with praise and worship to magnify the Lord and allow God's presence to minister to my brokenness and to heal my broken heart and bind up my wounds. That's what God would do That's what God would do for you when you get back in the place of worship and praise with his intimacy with God. When you spend that quality time in God's presence, it doesn't matter what you encounter or go through, the Holy Spirit inside of you will always begin to give you a peace that surpasses your natural understanding, a calmness to bring rest in your spirit and help you carry yourself through 
the challenging and difficult and hardships and, and painful moments and help you make it through your journey and come out victoriously with a testimony to help somebody else along their way. So we got to suffer patiently, suffer patiently. So when you find yourself facing with suffering and disappointments, don't allow it to get you into a place of a darkness where you get stuck in the pit of despair. Because when you get to that place, it is many times hard to deliver that individual if they don't want to be set free. And one thing about it, I remember I had a pastor years ago. I was going through a problem that I couldn't seem to handle on my own. And he says, how bad do you want the deliverance? How bad do you want the healing? How bad do you want Jesus? And I had to have a personal conviction in myself to realize that Christ is greater than the moments of telling myself, I don't feel like it. I'm tired. I ain't going to never get out of this situation. I'm always having the same old problem. I'm always find people not liking me. I'm always be left out. I'm always be ostracized. You know, it doesn't matter. Because God loves us unconditionally. So it doesn't matter what people think about you. Just like when Joseph in the Bible, he was thrown in pit, lied on in jail, and Potiphar, his wife, tried to uh, deceive him. Guess what happened? God still blessed Joseph, took him from the pit to the jail to the palace. He set him up as the second in command to Pharaoh. God knows how to promote you even in your problems. And when you allow God to begin to have the focal point of your mindset, the wilderness mentality is a place of wandering, a place where your mind is all over the place. When you get into that predicament of the mindset where there's no control over your thought life, you'll find yourself grabbing to the, anything the devil speaks into your mind. But God has a way to bring you out. There's a danger in complaining. We got to recognize there's a danger in complaining. We should not tempt the Lord, try this patience, become a trial to him, critically appraise him, and exploit his goodness, as some of them did and were killed by poisonous serpents. Nor discontentedly, Complain as some of them did and were put out of the way entirely by the destroyer of death. Now these things befell them by the way of a figure and an example and a warning to us. They were written to admonish and to fit us for right action by good instructions. We in whose days the age have reached their climax, their consummation and concluding period. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 9 through 11. So we not to get into a place of complaining, because complaining will cause you to miss your blessings every time. Murmuring and grumbling and complaining will keep you stuck in the wilderness. 11-day journey is what it all took for the children of Israel to get to the promised land. But because of the murmuring and complaining and the grumbling and the bickering and talking about leadership, trying to use the authority, it kept them stuck for 40 years in the wilderness. And God has a way, even in your wandering, to allow you to stay there until you make up your mind. And that's one thing about God. God doesn't violate our will. He's not going to infiltrate your thought life and say, hey, you need to think my thoughts. Hey, you need to get in my word. Hey, you need to fast and pray. You need to consecrate. God is not going to violate you. He's going to let you do just what you want to do when you want to do it until you make up your mind. And when you make up your mind and you tell yourself, you know what? I've been doing the same old thing year after year. I've been finding myself stuck in the same old position year after year. I find myself keep smoking joints. Year after year, I keep finding myself drinking year after year in the same old cycle. I'm stuck in a wilderness. Guess what? God has the power to speak one word into your life and your whole life change. 
But the problem comes in when I and myself oppose God. I tell God Jesus wasn't good enough. Because if you tasted of the heavenly gift of salvation and you turn and you walk away from it, there remains no more sacrifice for you. It's in the word. And the thing is, the reason why there's no more sacrifice, because Jesus did the ultimate sacrifice once and for all. And the Bible says he sat down at the right hand of the Father in majesty on high. So when he paid the price for our redemption, he didn't change his mind and said, you know what? Uh, they ain't going to live right. They ain't going to make, they're going to keep on making the same mistakes. They're going to keep on falling into sin and iniquity. They're going to keep on judging one another. They're going to keep on backbiting, hating on each other. You know what? Let me just forget the sacrifice. That wasn't good enough. But no, he paid an ultimate price for the provision of our sins. And not ours only, but the sin of the whole world. And because of that, his grace is sufficient. His power is manifest in our life to change us if we choose to want to be changed. Grumbling, fault finding, or complaining. Do all things without grumbling and fault finding and complaining against God and questioning and doubting among yourselves that you may show yourself to be blameless and guiltless innocent and uncontaminated children of God without blemish, faultless, unrebukable in the midst of a crooked and a wicked generation, spiritually perverted and perverse, among whom you are, among whom you are as bright lights, stars, or a beacon shining out clearly in the dark world. Philippians chapter 2, verse 14 to 15. Philippians chapter 2, verse 14, 15. So everything that we do, even if it don't seem right, it doesn't feel right, do it without grumbling and complaining. You might be working in a position in a church or on a job, and you don't want to be doing this position. Do it without grumbling and complaining. Because when you do it to the satisfaction of God's glory, God will cause blessings and favor to open up on your life to promote you to the place where he wants you to be in that company or in that church. But it's up to you to make a decision to walk in the truth of God's word. Amen. Sometimes it seems the whole world is complaining. There's much grumbling and murmuring and so little gratitude and appreciation. And that is so true. So we got to get to the place where we keep on seeking God's faith, putting them first. And don't allow the enemy get you in a, in a heart of discontentment where everything around you begins just to fall apart because of your attitude. Let this mind be in you that's also in Christ Jesus. Don't fret or worry. Pray and give thanks. Do not fret or have any anxiety about anything, but in, in every circumstance, in everything, Pray and petitions definite request with thanksgiving. Continue to make your wants known to God. So when you pray, pray with an expectancy. Don't pray out of anxiety because I'm worrying about something. Don't, don't pray because I'm fretting something that things are going to get worse. My condition going to get worse. When you pray, pray with a heart and saying, God, I'm coming to you with my petition my cry, my heart desire, and I'm trusting you, God, that you're going to answer my request. And I thank you that you're in control of my life. When you pray on that type of mindset, you give God the ability to intervene in your situation. You give him the power to manifest his presence in your situation. And everything the devil thought that had power over you begin to lose his grip. And the chains and the shackles fall off. And the power of God begin to manifest in your life to heal, deliver, strengthen, empower you to walk in your freedom. Apostle Paul teaches us how to solve our problems. He instructs us to pray with thanksgiving in every circumstance. So we got to have a thankful heart. Even in this holiday season, have a thankful heart. Don't allow yourself to get into a place where you come grumbling and complaining just because things are going the way you want to go. But keep on praising God, giving him the glory. Give him the power. Let his will 
be manifest in your life that you walk in his divine purpose and his order he has for your steps because the word says the steps of a good man or good woman they're ordered by the Lord. He delights in his way. So God has a plan. God has a purpose. He has a desire. He has something to do through your life for you to accomplish. And all he's looking for you is to say, okay, Lord, here I am. Send me. I'll go. Yes, Lord, I'll obey your will. That's all he's looking for. He's not looking for people going to complain and grumble about everything that happened in their life. You got to allow the spirit of God to break that mindset. Because the enemy wants to get you stuck in the vision of seeing only failure and defeat. But I come to encourage you tonight that you are victorious in Christ Jesus. And you have the power to overcome anything the devil throws your way. Because greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. If Jesus is the greater one inside of you, it's a guarantee. The spirit of the living God will cover you and guide you in the way of truth and even open your eyes to see that God is working behind the scenes in your situation to perfect the thing that concerns you. It doesn't matter what's going on in your life. Put a praise on it. Put a praise on it. Now allow the spirit of the living God begin to manifest in your life. And I guarantee when you do that, your focus going to change. Your attitude going to change. Your conversation going to change. And that's another point. We have to be careful of what we allow to come out of our mouths through complaining or murmuring or grumbling. Because when you do that, you begin to put a damper on the promises God has for your life. It's not going to negate the promises God has for you, but it takes it longer to manifest in your life because your conversation is not lining up with God's word. And that's one thing I had to learn years ago. I used to be a doubter. I wouldn't believe unless I've seen stuff happen. If someone said God did a miracle in their life, I won't see it. If somebody said that God blessed them, I won't see it. Until I begin to change my confession, in my conversation and begin to tell God, I thank you for the miracles and the blessings you've done in my friend's life. God, manifest yourself in my life. And guess what happened? God starts showing me things in my life. And my eyes begin to see what God sees. My ears begin to hear what God hears. And then my mind begins to perceive what God wanted me to perceive. And my heart begins to walk in it by faith. And that's what we have to do is change our confession. Let your conversation be seasoned with salt and covered with the grace of God. Salt is a preservative. And the Holy Spirit inside of you will preserve you from everything the devil thinks is going to negate the promise of God in your life. All God's promises for you and for me are yes and amen. And all we have to do is receive it by faith. Doesn't matter what you need God to do in your life. You might need a financial breakthrough. You might need an increase on your job. You might need money to pay your bills. Doesn't matter what it is. Change your confession. Don't allow a bitter, foul spirit to get in your heart to put you in a place of darkness. Because the enemy knows if I can distract you. I can distort your vision from seeing God working in your, your situation. But I guarantee this one thing for you tonight, that when you allow God to give you that 2020 vision from the word of God to see what God sees, you'll start beginning to put a praise on what you need God to do. You start blessing him and then thanking him. Even when you don't see it happening, I know with confidence that my God will supply all my need according to rich and glory by Christ Jesus. Why? Because I'm seeking his face. I'm trusting in his word. I'm standing fast on, on his promises. Everything God said to me it would not return to him void. But God's promises say he would perform it in my life. And I want to thank you, God, that you're going to do just that by faith. And guess what happens? It happens. Like one thing I pray a lot. I said, Lord, I thank you. And when I give in church, this is mainly why I say this too. So, Lord, I take this seed. I'm about to sow into the church. I ask, Lord God, that you bless this seed, 
allow the rain to fall in from heaven, oh God, to cause a harvest to come from this seed. And not only that, I said, Lord, I thank you that debts are being canceled, bills being paid in full, checks in the mail. I thank you, God, for favor and increase on my life and everything I touch will be blessed and highly favored of God. In Jesus' name, amen. And guess what happens? I get blessed every single time. It might be blessed by somebody else. It might be blessed by giving, helping somebody with something they need to do. It might be blessed by just giving a kind word to somebody. I might be blessed. It doesn't matter what form of the blessing is. Because a lot of times we look for monetary blessings. When God says, no, it's just giving your time to somebody to bless them. And in return, I bless you. And we have to get to the place where we're willing to be a giver in the kingdom of God, because God doesn't have stingy people in his kingdom. We got to be able to give our seed in obedience to God's word. He said, give, and it will come back to you. Good measures, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men give unto your bosom. Matthew chapter 6, verse 38. You got to be able to give. And when you sow those seeds in faith, in whatever ministry God tells you to sow it in, give with an expectancy that God is going to bless me even more because of my obedience. And I tell you, when you have that type of attitude, there is nothing God withholds from you when you walk right before him. So tonight, as we come to close, this lesson will start on chapter 20 next week. We got about, uh, I think, five more lessons left in this book. Then we'll be done with this book. But I just pray that this is really enriching to your souls, encouraging to your spirit, and enlightening to your heart. Now I pray that this word is changing your thought life. Because the more I hear this word and even teach this word, it's changing me on the inside out. One thing about it, we've been dealing in our church for the last couple of months about sitting in a breach. A breach is an access that we give the enemy the right to come in and out of our lives. And tonight, God wants you to seal that breach. Don't allow the enemy to enter to your thought life through negativity. I don't care who comes around you negative. I'm the type of person. I'm a positive person. I'm an exciting person. I love being around people. And then I tell you, when people come around me negative, it's my exit. And I, I don't have time for it. And I tell people in a minute, don't waste my time. I don't have time to waste with your negative, negative words, your negative influences, I don't have time for your negative conversation because there's negative energy. And you attract negative energy through negativity. If you are a negative person, tonight you may need to make a choice in yourself. I'm going to change my attitude. Because with that type of attitude, that's the wilderness mentality. The wilderness mentality would keep you stuck in the wilderness in negativity and keep on attracting negative things to happen in your life. The reason why so many people are suffering today is because of negativity. My confession has been negative. My attitude has been negative. I allow negative people in my life, in my circle. You have to guard your circle. You need to have people surround you that are positive, who are exciting, who's encouraging, who's prosperous, people who are going to help enable you to get where you need to go in your, in your purpose. And when you do that, You'll find yourself fulfilling the law of Christ, walking in obedience to God's word. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord, for this word tonight. I pray, oh God, that something has been said that will encourage your people, God, to reevaluate their hearts, to see where they are in the faith in Jesus Christ, and that you, God, will perfect the thing that concerns them. And we rebuke every foul and demonic spirit, of oh God, that will try to attach itself to their minds and to their hearts from hearing this word tonight, oh God, that this word will make an impact in all of our lives, oh God, to change us from the inside out, to cause us to have a desire to want to please you and walk obedience to your word. And I thank you, oh God, that tonight you release blessings in favor upon every person, God, who hear this word and bring increase on their finances, on their health, on their mindsets, on their heart, on their family, on their children, God. Bring increase on their businesses, God, on their ministries. Everything that they're doing, God, they will be blessed coming in and blessed going out. And I thank you for it, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. As we do each week, 
If you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I want you to repeat this prayer after me. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I acknowledge that I am a sinner. I ask you to come into my heart, forgive me for my sins, knowingly and unknowingly, and wash me in the blood of the Lamb. Now come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. And I thank you in Jesus' name. Now, Lord, fill me with the Holy Spirit and with power to be a witness for you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, welcome to the family of God. And I guarantee that the whole host of heaven is rejoicing over that one sinner and turned their life over to the Lord. And the Spirit of God is going to continue to increase and bless and show favor upon their lives. So you stay encouraged tonight and know that God is on your side. No matter what you go through in this life, God is going to continue to rain showers of blessings on you as you walk into the promises of his word. I'm going to post the link if you decide anyone who wants to sow a donation to this ministry and receive that song into this ministry is going right back into the ministry. And also, I'm pasting on here my uh, YouTube channel. If anyone you know want to share this lesson with, it'll be on my YouTube channel tonight. You can uh, share this with them, encourage them to allow God to minister to, to their hearts to change their lives. And I guarantee when you do that, you will receive a blessing because of your obedience. Because of your obedience to share this word with someone that needs to hear this word. Allow the spirit of the living God to empower you to be a witness for him every day as you wake up in the morning with a purpose to be a light in the midst of darkness. So, Father, I, tonight I thank you, God, as we come to close another lesson, that the grace of God will rest upon our heart. Sweet communion of the Holy Spirit will abide in us until we meet again. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless you, everyone. God bless you, Keon, Mary, my sister. I thank you for coming on tonight. I just uh, continue to stay encouraged, walk in your victory, live in your purpose for a purpose. And I guarantee you do that. The Lord himself will walk before you as the mighty warrior to crush the enemy in his tracks right before you in Jesus' name. Until next week, the Lord says the same. We'll be back on again at 6 o'clock. Share it with someone else and encourage them to join us um, whenever they can on our lessons Tuesday nights at 6 o'clock. All right, you all have an awesome evening. Until next week, God bless you. Shalom.